Hi, I'm Dr. Ishpa. I'm a registrar in internal medicine and you are watching the Medical Forum. Hi folks, I'm Dr. Ishpak. I'm uh, one of the registrars in internal medicine in Sri Lanka. I recently passed my selection exam of uh, medicine and uh, I'm a first year registrar right now. I just want to make this video to uh, shed some light upon uh, the preparation and the guidance needed for it. Um, first of all, to uh, get an idea of what you are stepping into, First of all, it's uh, very vital to understand that uh, what you are willing to do. Uh, basically, are you interested in being a clinician? Uh, so, if uh, you are interested in surgery or some other sort of field, uh, this might be not the most ideal step for you. So, in your career to choose uh, what would you be uh, doing in your future, it is very vital to decide on uh, what is actually your interest. So, my interest was in internal medicine. So, henceforth I uh, sat the exam for the selection exam. Now, uh, the ideas which I will be emphasizing in this video. First of all, me being a foreign graduate, how did I succeed? What are the obstacles I came across? and what are the materials which I uh, needed to study for the exam, how much time I needed to study, what are the questions uh, I used and what uh, did I use any question banks and uh, what's the studying intensity and what are the methods of recall I used and finally uh, I would uh, also shed some light on some mistakes I learned from and advices I got from my seniors. Um, so to talk about uh, me being a foreign graduate, well I studied in Russia, graduated from St. Petersburg State Pavlov uh, Medical University and I did my internship in uh, one of the peripheral hospitals, base hospitals in Sri Lanka. The bulk of my uh, medicine apart from my uni studies, uh, I gained most of the clinical experience from uh, Sri Lankan internship. So the internship was actually uh, a vital uh, step in uh, succeeding uh, to pass the exam. Basically all the cases you find and uh, all the patients you deal with, they are all uh, typical textbook scenarios and you know, it's uh, very important that you learn the uh, basics then and there so that uh, you don't keep things ahead. Uh, then how much uh, time did I uh, need? Now, it's actually subjective. There are slow learners, there are fast learners. I'm actually a slow learner. So I actually uh, started studying devotionally in January. From January, February, March, April, so basically four months of intense devotional studies. Uh, but before that, I actually started preparing uh, one one year ago. But you know that was not devotional, and you know I had uh, huge breaks in between, so that uh, wasn't that uh, productive. But uh, to be honest, four months of uh, dedicated study uh, may was uh, enough to get the confidence to do the papers. So being a foreign graduate was not at all an obstacle, so don't get disheartened or uh, demotivated. Uh, I was initially uh, kind of backward and demotivated because of uh, this uh, knowledge gap, but there's nothing as such. Uh, we are all uh, uh, equally competent like everyone, so uh, that's not a big deal at all, so you don't have to listen to uh, people commenting about it. Um, the next is what are the resources? The main bulk of material is actually uh, general medicine and the basic medical sciences. For the basic medical sciences, I used uh, basic medical sciences MRCT preparation by Easterbrook. That book actually gave uh, an outline of what you need to know in each topic, basically the core concepts. 
and uh, that helped me not to get uh, uh, astray from the topic, you know, not to read unnecessary things, not to load your uh, brain with unnecessary data. Next, I uh, used the Kumaran Club. It's better to have the latest edition of Kumaran Club because uh, Kumaran Club has many annotations, pictures, you know, which can be directly uh, incorporated into your MCQ papers. So it's uh, important, not necessarily to have a hard copy. If you're okay with soft copies, you can have soft copies while referring to your old hard copies. Next, uh, it's better to have an up-to-date account. I know update is uh, not free, but you can also uh, subscribe to uh, Better Evidence program and somehow apply for a scholarship fund so that they will uh, give you a free subscription for a year and then you have to uh, renew it. Uh, basically, UpToDate has uh, a wide range of uh, information uh, in uh, the relevant topics with the uh, resources of newest journals with uh, uh, good evidence-based medicine. So that is uh, uh, very important for you to uh, study in order to find the answers. Uh, next, uh, it's good to have a Medscape. Uh, I know almost all of you would be having Medscape and using it. So that's also good. So these are the main material uh, which I use to get the basic core. Apart from that now, for basic medical sciences, pharmacology, I used Bennett and Brown uh, because that was quite concise and it was summarized, uh, not much bogus details, so it was short and sweet. For pathology, it made everyone suggested Robinson Cotton uh, and obviously that's a very important book because uh, there are some tables which are direct MCQs. Um, so it's better to read Robinson Cotron if you have ample of time, but I know that Robinson Cotron is too big, so I'll tell you what I did. For physiology, many suggested Ganong's. I also read Ganong's, but you know I did not go through the whole of Ganong. Uh, I'll tell you what I did for physiology and pathology. Uh, so basically what I did was, uh, Soon after I graduated, I was actually preparing for my uh, United States Medical Licensing exam. So basically to cover the uh, basic concepts, I had actually uh, referred uh, the Kaplan uh, medical notes. So the Kaplan uh, notes for physiology, pathology, pharmacology. So uh, those lecture series and uh, the books were very helpful to get the basic concepts of uh, those uh, uh, four topics. So basically uh, I followed at home by Dr. Hussein Sattar. It was actually a, a word to word representation of Robinson Cochran in a very easy manner so that you, know, you don't have to uh, waste your time because I am not a, a reading person so you know it still varies. Uh, some people don't prefer uh, looking at long lengthy videos, they prefer reading it by themselves but for me it's not that, like that, you know, I prefer uh, visuals more than reading. So you have to find which method is uh, more suitable for you. Then um, after that uh, you have uh, to uh, gain uh, good concepts uh, based on the topics like uh, when you're doing general medicine. What I did was I started off with the cardiovascular system. So in cardiovascular system, I finished the physiology of cardiovascular, pathology of cardiovascular, pharmacology related to cardiovascular, and the general medicine from Kumaran Clark. So basically when I'm doing each and every topic in Kumaran Clark, I finish the physiology, pharmacology, pathology, then then there it's up. Right? So but basically when you finish all the topics of the systemic uh, content, you would be done with the systemic pathology, systemic pharmacology, systemic physiology. But then at the end you will be left only with the general fat, general pharma, general physio. That's no big deal, you can easily cover it up. Uh, in anatomy, we don't have to uh, pay more emphasis like how people in surgery would do. But um, uh, we have to show much importance to neuroanatomy. 
especially the cranial nerves, their pathways, the structure of the midbrain, pons, the vascular supply of them, and the clinical part relevant to uh, all those uh, neuroanatomy. It's very important because you will be questioned on, and it is important for your clinical judgment as well. So uh, I personally. Uh, used Dr. Najib because I have been using him since my university days and I'm, uh, I'm just in love with his uh, lectures. So they gave me a really good understanding about neuroanatomy. Uh, Y'all can just subscribe to him or just uh, look at his videos from YouTube and see if at all it's suiting you all or y'all can use last anatomy to get the relevant uh, basic core concepts on uh, neuroanatomy. I myself prefer Dr. Najib because I prefer a lot of visuals and uh, he teaches the clinically correlated things. So you, know, you don't have to waste your time on other focus material. Uh, so that's uh, done for the basics. And then now uh, talking about the questions. Um, for questions, uh, you need to get all the material, I mean all the past recalls from 2021 and backwards. Uh, well, I, I actually have uh, the recalls with me and uh, if you can drop down your email, I can just uh, email a link to you, you all can download and uh, have a look. So basically there are uh, questions divided according to their topics and divided according to their year. So whenever I complete a topic like say cardiology, I finish all the I finished all the questions related to cardiology. So by the time I finished entire uh, content according to their systems, I am almost done with almost uh, so many questions uh, related to those topics. So I have covered many questions. So by the time when I am revising, I started revising with the newest papers like from 2021 and backwards. So that is how I uh, did my revision. And then uh, using MRCP questions, or MRCP2 by Sanjay Sharma, uh, that book was very helpful for me because uh, that book uh, gave an idea of how questions can come and the questions were very good standard and uh, the vignettes were very rare and uh, uh, very nice, uh, it, it covered almost, almost all the common topics. So I would suggest you all to do the questions from Sanjay Sharma as well. The next is the uh, questions by the Ceylon College of Physicians. Uh, you all would have known by now that the Ceylon College of Physicians, they keep uh, the pre-MD course, uh, they keep uh, the, a course for the selection exam of medicine. They keep it uh, during the weekends, uh, it's online. and. Uh, they keep it uh, I think uh, two to three months prior to the exam and uh, there is a really experienced lecture panel and they uh, give you valuable advices how to deal with the paper and they give you an idea on what would be the structure of the paper, uh, what are the core content you need to focus on and I would highly recommend you to at least uh, go through the CCP course once because it was very uh, helpful for me. Uh, so those are the only sources of uh, questions which I practice. So did I study alone or did I study in a group? No, I studied in a group because uh, when you study in a group, you get to know your weaknesses and you get to know what others uh, found and uh, what you did not find. So that helps you to improve your knowledge and you know uh, it improves your memory because there is an active recall going over there. Uh, so I would highly suggest you to uh, get together with groups and make sure that the groups are not that large so that you know you don't get uh, carried away. Uh, I think around 3 to 4 people would be uh, good enough uh, to have those sort of group discussions. Next is the most important thing is you need to know uh, the basic um, structure of the paper. So the selection exam consists of two papers. You have uh, paper 1 and paper 2. Paper 1 is a basic medical science paper. It contains only two false questions. Paper 2 is a general medicine paper. It has a part A and a part B. Part A is only two false. Part B is best of five. So in the 
In basic medical sciences paper, you have 60 true false questions with 5 stems each, which is 300 stems in total. You have 3 hours to do this paper and then you uh, have to get minimum 40% to pass this paper. Uh, it's doable, the timing is quite okay. But uh, paper 2, the timing is quite tight, so uh, better not waste time in that paper. Part A has 40 true false, which 5, uh, 40 MCQs with 5 stems each. And then part B has 30 questions, which you have to choose only one answer. Almost, uh, sorry, I mean uh, not almost, all the true false questions have negative marking, right? But the rest of five doesn't have negative marking. So the aggregate of part A and part B should be 50% for you to pass. So 40% in paper 1 and 50% in paper 2. So that's the minimum criteria to pass the uh, theory of the selection exam. Once you pass the theory of the selection exam, you progress towards the OSCEs. And uh, the details about the OSCEs, I think I'll make another video uh, regarding it. Uh, so basically, uh, these are the main uh, things and main uh, concepts which you have to uh, keep in your mind. Uh, read through the prospectus of uh, the medis uh, uh, this course, MD Medicine. You can download it from the PGIM site. And uh, this prospectus towards the end, they have given uh, uh, a list of uh, topics and they have even mentioned uh, what percentage they will be questioning them on. For example, cardiology will be questioned uh, 16%, neurology 12%. So they have given uh, uh, a breakdown of that list. That is very important because uh, out of the 60, out of the 60 questions, out of the 60 questions, you will know what to focus more, what to uh, focus uh, slightly less. You, know, you will have an uh, idea about that. The next uh, most important thing is to always have a schedule. Do not uh, go blank. Do not go study blindly. Always have a timeline that within this period I would finish this, within this period I would finish this. Ahead of time you should anticipate that this is what I will be doing by this uh, uh, by this time I would have finished this part, I would have this much left and today when you think about uh, your, uh, your preparations you need to uh, know that uh, how much you are left with uh, is the time enough, you know. That sort of sense comes when you uh, plan ahead. Uh, that helps in your preparation and in your confidence. Um, then there are two other books which I refer, uh, MRCP, Data Interpretation and the uh, Stat, st statistics, medical statistics made easy. Those two books were also very helpful because uh, data interpretation is a must and uh, you need to know how to interpret uh, reports of hematology, spirometries and uh, endocrine uh, function tests like uh, examination suppression tests, uh, short synaptin tests, etc. So data interpretation for MRCP that book was very helpful. And uh, the medical statistics made easy was a really nice book. It's very simple. It uh, gives you uh, four concepts of statistics, like uh, they literally spoon feed you. So uh, you get like around three to four questions of statistics. So basically, for that three to four questions, this book is more than enough to get uh, whatever uh, the four concepts uh, you need. Um, Basically, uh, that that's the basic idea which you need uh, for the preparation for the selection exam. And I don't think it's that hard. Well, I wouldn't say it's easier to. Uh, but with hard work and uh, the proper method and uh, being tactful, I think you can cope and you can pass this exam and uh, get through the Bioskis and somehow become a registrar in uh, Sri Lanka in general medicine. Um, I think I've uh, shed light upon all the important topics and uh, if you do have doubts, if you do have uh, questions, uh, you can always uh, email me, I'll just uh, write down my uh, email here and uh, you can just uh, email me and uh, I'll, uh, I'll try my best to answer all on time. And uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.
I'll see you guys soon.